All right, welcome back everyone to another Bio 100 video. So in this video, we're looking at how to identify the main points of a scientific paper. So in the past video, we talked a little bit about what the different parts of a paper are and what the structure is. And so in this video, we'll talk about how we can look at different particular parts of the paper to help us determine what the main point of that paper is. And this is an important skill to have. First of all, it's going to save you time. So if you're able to quickly skim through a paper and you know where to look for those key points, you can really determine a lot faster if the paper that you're looking at is relevant for uh, the particular thing that you're studying or the particular project that you're doing, whether this paper is going to be a good reference for it or not. So it's going to save you time, which is good because we all have so many things going on with work and school and family. So saving time is always a plus. And then this is also a really good, important skill to have for your future career. So um, you're all biology majors. So being able to quickly skim a paper and identify the main points is going to be really useful for a really wide variety of biology careers, whether you want to go to graduate school or you're interested in some healthcare field. All of these fields, um, they require you to read papers and to be able to digest the knowledge that's contained within those papers. And I would even argue that no matter what career you go into, being able to read papers and quickly identify the main points of those papers is really important to continue your own professional development. So no matter what field you go into, there's going to be evidence for the field about what works well or what doesn't work well, and that evidence is going to be contained within papers. So for me, for instance, as a professor here at Zach State, I'm constantly looking at education literature and seeing what the evidence suggests for teaching in the classroom and how I can help you all as students learn the best. And so being able to skim and identify the main points of scientific papers helps me become a better professor, hopefully, for you all. So that's why being able to do this type of thing is important. So what I'm going to do in this video is give you a breakdown of where some of the really good places to look are in a paper to be able to identify those main points. So in papers we have our main idea and then we may have separate points that are related and so I'll talk about where you want to look to help you quickly identify those main points. And at the document level, so at the level of the paper itself, there are a couple different places that are really good to look. You can look at the title of the paper. You can look at the abstract of the paper, which we've talked about before, is that basic standalone summary. You can look at the keywords, which are those four to six key phrases or terms that tell you what the paper is related to, so what techniques are used, what organism was used. Um, visuals, so this is like what we've talked about before, it can be um, figures, uh, like graphs or maps, that kind of thing, or also tables, which we've talked about. So those visuals, which are in generally which section of the paper, if we're talking about graphs and tables, right, that would be in the results section. And then um, other good places to look are the first or the last one to two sentences of the introduction, and also the first paragraph of the discussion. And so I'll go through some examples of each of those sections next and how that helps us to determine where the main points of the paper are. So the first document level example, again, um, where we're identifying key points of the paper that can help us determine the main idea. So here, if we go back to our fish egg example that we've been talking about in the past. If we look at the title of that paper, the title is Large Interannual Variation in Spawning in San Diego Marine Protected Areas Captured by Molecular Identification of Fish Eggs. So by looking at the title, we know that it's going to look at several different years if we're looking at interannual variation, and we know that they're going to be identifying fish eggs in a particular region in San Diego Marine Protected Areas. So we can already tell from that title what the gist of the paper is. 
the abstract is going to give us some additional information as well. That was already discussed in the previous paper structure video, so we've already gone over that. And then the keywords are shown below here. So the keywords for that particular paper are fish spawning, again, is when you have your fish releasing the eggs and sperm into the water and then it's fertilized, that's the spawning. Um, DNA barcoding, um, we haven't really talked about, but that's just a way to do this molecular identification of fish eggs. Ichthyoplankton means um, fish eggs and larvae, and then long-term monitoring means we're thinking of this study not just in terms of a single sampling point or singling year, but across time. So these different parts of the paper or the document, the title, the abstract, and the keywords so far have already given us a pretty good idea about what this paper is going to be about and what the main ideas might be. So if we look even further, another example we said where you would want to look at the paper are visuals. So one example of visuals we said was figures. So one of the figures for that same fish egg paper is shown here. And if we look at what this figure is showing us, we see that there are different years. So each of these parts here, the panels, is a different year. And then on the y-axis, we have the average number of eggs per collection. And so remember, the title of the paper said that they were looking at interannual variability. And so if we look here, just looking at these lines, we can see that in 2013, there were a lot of fish eggs collected. In 2014, there were big peaks here. 2017, big peaks. But in 2015 and 2016, those numbers stayed really low. And so by looking at this figure in the paper, we can, again, see that one of the main points, main ideas of this paper is that there's variation across years in how many fish eggs are spawned and collected. If we look at another figure to take that even further, we can also see that in addition to there being differences overall in the number of fish eggs that are collected across each year, now we're looking at the data slightly differently where each of these panels now represents a different species of fish. So we have this as a flatfish, um, we have sardines over here, and so here this is just building on that idea if we think back to the title they talked about molecular ID of fish eggs. So here, this particular figure is going a step further and looking at not only how many eggs we had, but what actual different species they were. Um, and even within there, we see there's variability across species with big spikes here in sardine, for instance, whereas this species stays low throughout. And then if we continue to look at the visuals of that paper, now, so we've already established so far, based on what we've looked at for this paper, that they're looking at differences across years, and they're looking at differences among species. And so if we look at these two uh, visuals here, we have a table and a figure. Now we're starting to look at what the environmental influences are that might be affecting that variation across years. So here in this table, we have the average temperature across different years. Um, so that could be something that's affecting how many fish eggs we're collecting. And then in fact, if we look at this figure on the right here, which we've already talked about um, before, it's an example of a regression, we can see that as the winter temperature increases, the number of eggs collected in the following spring and summer is going to decrease. So there's a negative correlation, a negative relationship there. So we're, again, seeing that one of the main points of this paper is that not only there are differences in the number of eggs you collect depending on the year, there are differences depending on what species it is, but also that temperature is one, water temperature is one of the environmental factors that seems to be influencing these differences that we're seeing. If we look even further now at the first two sentences of the introduction of that paper, for instance, we can get a little bit broader picture about how this main idea of this paper fits into management of marine resources and how 
they're interested in um, ecosystem status. So we're thinking not only now about the particular fish eggs we're collecting, but what they mean within the broader context. And then if we look at the last two sentences of the introduction, we add an additional piece of information, an additional main idea of the paper that we actually haven't gotten yet from those other pieces that we've already looked at. So here, if we look, now they're adding information and telling us that they're sampling from different habitats. So they're sampling from a kelp forest habitat, which is shown down here. So these tall um, things, this is the bottom of the ocean, this is the top. So we have these kelp forests here. And so what they're doing now is sampling, so collecting fish eggs both in that kelp forest over here and also the sandy beach which is shown over here, and wanting to compare and see if there are different patterns of spawning or different species that are spawning in these two different habitats. So that habitat specific aspect is a main point of the paper that we haven't yet gotten from the other aspects we've already looked at. And then if we also look at the first paragraph of the discussion of that paper, we again see that they're investigating temporal changes of spawning fishes and if we look here across their sampling they were able to identify species using those molecular techniques so that was the graph we saw where they had different species they were able to identify across their different sampling years so those are some of the document level places to look. So if you're just skimming a paper, you want to look at the title, the abstract, the keywords, the very beginning and the very end of the introduction, the beginning of the discussion, and then also those visuals, the tables and figures in the paper to help you quickly get an idea about what the main points of the paper are. Other things that I want to point out is if you're then skimming the actual words in the paper, there are some particular words and phrases that you want to keep an eye out for because they'll also help you identify those main points of the paper. So I have some words listed here. If you see, see things like surprising, striking, unexpected, in contrast with previous work, or has seldom been addressed, these are all terms that address the novelty of the paper. So how this paper is new and different from what other people have done before. And that's really gonna help you identify the main point or the main idea of that paper, especially if it's different from what other people have done. Other keywords and phrases to look at are things like we hypothesize or we propose, we introduce or we develop. And these are really giving you an idea of what the main objective or purpose of the paper is and what the authors are trying to do. Again, these are key phrases that will help you determine the main idea of the paper. And then lastly, some other words to look out for are the data suggest or our analysis finds. And these are all phrases that are going to give you a summary of the results. And so again, those are going to help you identify the main points of the paper. So what was the main thing that they found that was important in their study? So some examples of that, if we again go back to our fish egg data set, they say in their discussion that the most striking observation of the study was the big decline in spotting during two really warm years. So again, this is that figure we showed before and we already noticed there was this large variation among years and there were really low amounts of spawning in these two years that were really warm. So that was one of the most striking things from their study. Another example of a phrase, um, the word we can hypothesize. And so here this is a paper that we haven't talked about yet but we're going to come back to it later. In this paper, they say we can hypothesize that the reduction in richness we observe in EU, um, so this is Europe, compared with BF, which is Burkina Faso. If you don't know where that is, I didn't either. It's here, it's located um, in Africa. And so what 
they were doing in this paper was actually comparing the microbiota of children that were found in Europe versus Burkina Faso, and they found these large differences that they think is due to the different diets of these children in these two different countries. Um, the microbiota, again, if you think back to those um, simulated experiments we did with the mice, nope, doesn't look like a mouse, but um, pretend, where we were giving them different compounds X and Y, and then seeing how the number of bacteria when we plated that out was affected by those compounds. So those are the microbiota, the microbes that are contained within the gut of those mice. Here they were looking at the microbiota of different children in different geographic regions. But again, if we're looking for these keywords here, we can hypothesize that helps us identify a main point of the paper. Another phrase example is when people are summarizing their data and they say something like, suggesting. So that was one of the phrases we pointed out, suggesting is something that summarizes results. And here, this is something that we've talked about, at least in my classes a little bit, is this idea of a growth mindset. So this idea of a growth mindset is that your intelligence is not fixed, it changes over time, and you can work harder to increase your learning and become better at something. And so in their research in this paper, they're showing that a growth mindset, someone who has a growth mindset is more likely to have higher academic achievement. So again, remember growth mindset is super beneficial, um, but this example here is another example of a key phrase you would look for in a paper to identify the main point of the paper. Okay, so those were some examples of places within the structure of the paper and then also some key words to look for. So now go ahead, go back to Canvas and you'll take a quiz where you'll have some practice where I'm giving you different components of papers and then I'll ask you based on those components what you think the main idea of that paper is.